this all got started. In Palm Beach County 40 years ago, the Palm Beach County Commission conducted meetings on Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. There were no Jews elected in this county, no blacks. Everything was countywide. There were no districts. Everything ran countywide. And we as Democrats set out to change the landscape, and we did that. We were pro-choice. We were for church and state separation. We were pro-Israel. We were pro-union. We were for social security. We were for health care. And we were Democrats. We respected police. We respected teachers. We respected our elders. We respected people we agreed with, and we respected people we didn't agree with. We respected success. That's the kind of Democrats we were. See, I'm an old Democrat. <coughs> I got my news from a guy named Huntley and Brinkley and Cronkite and Brokaw. Ah, yeah. They gave me the facts, and when they gave me the facts on the news, I made judgments. I think clearly things have changed. And I think the new Democratic Party is different than the old Democrats. They say they speak to the truth. So today, I'm going to speak to the truth. I remember walking into restaurants in Palm Beach County and seeing Republicans I didn't get along with. I made a face, I rolled an eye, I said hello or I ignored them. It was beyond my comprehension to scream and yell in front of them and their families in such a rude and disrespectful manner because my father and his father would never have allowed it to occur and because it was beyond my imagination that this was proper. So when I see my party, my Democrats, in front of other families, in front of the children terrorizing them in public settings, I wonder, is this me they're representing? Although my issues are the same, it's not my behavior. It's not the way I'm proud of my party. I remember when, I'll debate anybody. You pick your topic, pick the place, I'll debate any Republican anywhere on anything. But I can't imagine screaming from the audience of a speaker on a podium to shut down free speech. It disturbs me. And when I see my party with my values screaming at people who are speaking from a podium, it's just unacceptable behavior to me. I wonder what's happened to my party. We protested in the 60s. I hope you like my 60s outfit. This isn't retro. This is the actual outfit. <laughs> and we marched in a very different way. I was part of SDS. Students for a Democratic Society. There was no color differences. We marched every color in that line. There were no gender issues. There were no sexual. Everybody had a preference for something that was more crazy than the next, and nobody cared. We had no race, no religion issues, no gender issues, and all lives matter. I totally understand Black Lives Matter. I totally understand where it comes from. But I made the mistake at a Democratic function of saying all lives matter, and they went, Psst can't say that. It's not correct. It's Black Lives Matter. And I said, but there's no difference. It's the same. And I found out, sadly, there is a difference. And until all lives matter, like Martin Luther King said, when there's no white power, and there's no black power, but there's God's power, until we come to that point, the divides will stay, no matter which way they swing. And again, I wonder about my party. We supported working American families. We supported the American dream. We actually thought that if you worked your way up and got rich and successful, it was fantastic. I didn't know that my grandfather and my father were immoral, and that the money they gathered was immoral, and there was something inherently wrong with them. I'm proud of my grandfather. I'm not going to apologize for him. He came from Europe before World War II. He got here in time. He became a butcher. He made a substantial amount of money, paid his taxes, and when he died, the government did what it's supposed to and took up half of everything he earned his entire life. Gave it to other people that had less, and the rest was given to my dad. And my dad did something real good. He formed gem caterers in Nassau County. He bought the Sands Beach Club and the El Patio Beach Club. We catered all over the place. My father made a fortune. And when my father died, they took another half of all the money he had. And that's fine. So my grandfather got half taken from him, and half of that was taken again. And when I die, and I give my money to my son, Eli, they're going to take half again. When they get done taking 87% of everything my grandfather earned, and I have someone on TV saying they want to tax me 70% of what's left, I start to wonder what I'm listening to. I understand inequity, but at what point is it just put towards me because maybe I have the American dream, because maybe I'm the result of it. And by the way, if I'm immoral, it's not with money. <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> we 
were old Democrats. And when I say we were old Democrats, let me tell you what we were. We supported Israel. My Democratic Party supported Israel, not maybe, not almost. And we believe the capital of Israel should be where Israel chose, and we believe the capital of Israel should be Jerusalem. It's not complicated. I watched the presidential State of the Union. I watched Trump, and to be clear, it happened between 10.09 and 10.12 last night, because we played it three times because I had to watch it a third time. Mm -hmm. The rest of the speech, I kind of got lost. Mm -hmm. And Trump said as follows. First he said, more women elected, more women jobs. What a great thing. And the women and Democrats and Republicans exploded. And then he talked about the inequities in the criminal justice system and how they've changed it with their new act. And they're going to make it so that it's more fair and get people out earlier. And the Democrats and Republicans exploded in class. And then he said, and we're proud to say we now recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And but for six or seven Democrats, the Democratic Party sat on its hands and didn't know when to clap. Watch it. I had my party clap for the benefit of females, the benefit of minorities, but not for the benefit of Jerusalem. And I was a little puzzled by that. As a matter of fact, I was kind of offended by that. And then I look and I think, my president, Barack Obama, who we work for with Robert Wexler and Wendy and we all work for. In his last eight weeks of office, the United Nations Security Council went to pass a resolution condemning Israel for occupying the Jewish section of Jerusalem. And traditionally, you know, they're out to get us and the non-Jewish world wants to punish Israel. We get it. And the United States had always vetoed that occurrence. So the Security Council could not declare and an illegal occupation of Jerusalem worldwide. Obama chose not to use the veto. And that vote was passed. I'm not that smart. I may not get it. Does anybody have any idea why this man, president of my country, my Democrat, would allow that to happen? I have no idea. It disturbs me greatly. So you look at the Democratic Party and you say, I'm a proud Democrat. I mean, I'm Robert Kennedy, Democrat. I worked his campaign. I, I, I was too young to work John Kennedy, but right after that, I worked them all. And I disagreed with congressmen and presidents, and I've met a whole bunch, and we've been in Delray with a whole bunch, Republicans and Democrats. I've questioned their motives. I've questioned their integrity. I've questioned the way they function. I've questioned their honesty, their logic. But it would never have occurred to me to call one of them a motherfucker. And when a congressperson Democrat on television calls the President of the United States on TV publicly a motherfucker, I was absolutely couldn't even imagine I was listening to this. And Nancy Pelosi, my leader, and I, I actually like Nancy, we had her in Delray, and both of them. What do you think? I said, uh oh, mama's going to beat that little kid. And Nancy Pelosi said, and I quote, I'm not here to be a censor. How do I tell that to my child? How do I have the children watching this, thinking it's okay? Because if it's okay, don't go after Trump for being a jerk, because you're just as much a jerk. And don't, when the next president comes, if you can say it to that president, they can say it to our president. So what's happening? What's happening to the ethic? You take all that aside, and I pass something out to you tonight, and I want to share it with you. You all have a copy of this three page. I'm going to bring it home for you in case you think there's not a problem. A gentleman in Delray Beach called Reggie Cox, very active in the African-American community, continually and he helps his community part of the Southwest, Northwest neighborhood or the set transformation, whatever he does. He's very aggressive against Mitch Katz, one of our city commissioners. It's okay. And then he posts on the internet the following, which is a, you have the date and the repost. A Jewish businessman told me, we call you black people liquid money. The same way that water falls out of a man's hands, money typically seeps out of the black person's hands. Your community gets money and immediately gives it away to people who aren't black. We see that as a huge opportunity. Is that okay? That to me sounds like awful hate speech, particularly anti, but let's go to the next page because you can't judge a guy on one post. Let me tell you another thing you post. Reggie Cox reposts this. And I'm just going to give it to you. We taught that Hitler was the biggest terrorist known to mankind 
for what he supposedly did to the Jewish people from 1932 to 1945. But we were never told that Germany was doing the same thing to black people from 1890 until 1945. And to add to that, how can we, put, how can we be taught to look past the 100 million black people exterminated by American plantation owners in the transatlantic slave trade to focus on Hitler? Now read the next line. Jewish people call us the N-word, that we are forced to mourn for them over, their, over our own ancestors. We have been hoodwinked and bamboozled. Is there anybody that has a problem with having someone post this? Because to me, if it doesn't get more hate speech, it doesn't get more absolutely directly anti-Semitic. And for the third page, and there's more, but I just took three, what he posts, and there's a video, which is not here, if you're black and contemplating visiting Israel, think again. And he speaks about blacks not spending money with Jews' benefit. Now, here's the kicker. Turn to page four. He's the guest speaker being honored by the Delray Democratic Club next week. Let me do it again for you. The person that posted what you just read is the guest speaker at the Delray Democratic Club next week being honored speaking about Black History Month. So Adam Frankel, Mitch Katz, who are Jewish city commissioners, contacted the DEC and the gentleman on the bottom and said, this is inappropriate. And he wrote him back. He told him he didn't care. He would do what he would do, and this is the new Democratic Party. So I'm telling you, each and every one of you, you've got your copy. This is Palm Beach County this week now. This is the guy that they're honoring at the Delray Beach Democratic Club. Doesn't it just make you feel wonderful? No. Doesn't it give you a good, solid feeling? If Terry Rizzo, chairman of our party, allows this to happen, she's sending you a message. If you don't react to this, show it to your children. See if they're proud that this is happening in your city. Because that's exactly what's happening in your city. Next. We do an occasional point, won't you? No, you're fine. <laughs> Not for another hour. Okay. What's going to happen to me for what I'm doing here? It's simple, because I know what the Democratic Party does. It's going to sidestep everything we're talking about. And they'll attack me personally. Do you know why they'll attack me personally? Because it's the new Democratic Party. What they do is, instead of dealing with an issue of why we scream in restaurants, why we yell at podiums, why we curse and vulgar on all they do is take whoever complains and they kind of drive them into a corner. The larger question is, what has destroyed the ability of our government to function? What has destroyed the civility and the communications that our government no longer works? Mm -hmm. There are several things we can blame, but before I tell you what I think it is, let me give you a couple. Social media. Mm -hmm. So why did social media, how does it really affect us in government? See, you had to be active in a club. You had to do something to work your way up. You had to get to the front of the room to have a voice. You had to go to a meeting and speak in front of a group. So you had to have some credibility. Now you don't. You just need a little thing to hit your letters. You can be as nuts as you want. You sit in your corner. You have all the social dysfunctional life. And your noise now can outdo a person that's been working for years, one person on a computer. Two, technology. And here's where technology hurts government. Instead of vetting information, instead of taking it, learning it, and moving it, it's moving so quickly to so many people that the facts are never vetted at all anymore. They are not only not vetted, but there's benefits and money to be made from unique hits on who gets what first instead of who gets what right. So we have two things. One, everybody's a big shot even if they don't contribute. And two, the movement of information is no longer accurate. Three is the breakdown of the family unit. And the breakdown of family units is interesting. And I'm not going to get deep into it, but I'll tell you this. It's no one's fault that you need two parents earning incomes and their parents aren't homes and the daycare center's raising your children. They're learning socialization in daycare centers instead of in their house doing homework. But what, what is happening is the crime rates go up and we're going to blame society, we're going to blame the neighborhoods, we're going to blame... Then there are kids who, or people who become alcoholics. And it's not their fault because it's genetic and they're like Down syndrome people and it's a disease and they became alcoholics, not by their choice, but because they had no choice. And then we have drug addicts and certainly it's not their fault. It's the drug companies and the doctors. And God forbid some parent takes responsibility and says, you know what, maybe I could have done a better job because you can't say that because if you attack a parent on parenting, it's not politically correct anymore. 
of all these things, that's not what I think is hurting this country the most. What's hurting the country the most, in my opinion, is the dysfunctional and disgusting reporting of a cable channel called CNN. I will not say the same for MSNBC, nor will I say the same for Fox News. Because MSNBC and Fox News don't have news. They don't even pretend to have news. They have the left and right crazies, or <coughs> off the wall people on either end, and Rachel Maddow believes what she wants. It's her show. She, she doesn't, no, no, boom. <laughs> Chris Matthews, Chris Hayes, Hanley, Tucker Carlson. I'll give you a list of all these people Lori Ingram, Al Sharpton. They don't pretend to be news, they pretend to be commentators of left and right. And that's what the First Amendment's about people getting on. Chris Cuomo has a show at 9 o'clock. It's not news. It's Chris Cuomo's opinions of what he thinks. That's what commentary properly should be. But when CNN pretends that Jake Tapper, Wolf Blitzer, and John Berman are news programs and journalists, and they give you the same garbage as every other commentator, then I have a question that the country is being misrepresented and the news of the world is being misrepresented. Let me give you an example of how clear this is. Recently, John Bolton made a speech. They took a picture of his notepad, blew it up and turned it around, and noted that it said 5,000 troops Columbia, and the news reported that. They reported the notes off the Secretary of Defense's notepad, not something he said, and then they spent the day evaluating what that really meant. Do you know how dangerous it is for them to take notes off someone's notepad relating to troop movements? Go further. There was a guy named Macron who is the Prime Minister, President of France. He gave a speech and said that nationalism is the opposite of patriotism. And CNN said he's just doing this to get Trump. And the reason he did it to get Trump is that Trump said, I'm a nationalist, I'm a nationalist. And Macron, who doesn't like him, said nationalism is the enemy, the opposite of patriotism. Either they don't read French or they don't understand what they're reporting. You have to know that the European Union is falling apart to having issues. United Kingdom, Brexit, pulling out. Italy's having budget issues, which are dramatically different. Greece and financial different. Angela Merkel is no longer going to be the head of the European Union. And the yellow shirts in France are giving Macron a problem. His speech was to the people of France not to take the country above the region, the region being the European Union. His speech about nationalism is that what we need to do is preserve the European Union, the region, and that nationalism is a is the opposite of patriotism because it'll damage our union. But that's not what they reported. They were too busy beating up Trump. Trump made a statement we're withdrawing from Syria. And for the first time, CNN reported the news. We are coming out of Syria. And let me tell you what they said next. A source near to the president says he's considering coming out of Lebanon too. The, um, Afghanistan also. I'm thinking, I just heard a news reporter announce a troop withdrawal on a source from the president where the government didn't announce it, the military didn't. I have CNN announcing the possibility of troop withdrawals. Then someone, one of the experts, because they got experts in everything, says on the news, South Korea had better worry because we could be pulling out of there next. So you have a channel broadcasting news around the world, not commentary, news, Wolf Blitz and Jake Tapper and John Burke. Stating we're pulling troops out of maybe Korea, maybe Afghanistan. The government's never said any of them. You don't think that's a problem when the news is now announcing? We have Korea, North Korea, and the USA in these negotiations. You got Trump, good, bad, or indifferent, doing what he's doing. You got Kim Jong doing what he's doing. Do you know what CNN reports? Can't trust North Korea, they're going to screw you. Can't trust Trump, he's going to screw you. Trump's going to lie to him. He, now you've got both countries with nuclear weapons playing a game of, of deadly war. And you got CNN urging them on for a fight, telling each one the other's gonna screw them and lie to them. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with the news reporting in the middle of negotiations with another country that each of the people should be concerned and expect to get screwed by the other party? If you don't think this is dangerous for America, then what is dangerous for America? And I wouldn't care if this was a talk show commentary. But it's not. They report these things as news. CNN reports that, and it comes from the New York Times, I think, this one, that Donald Trump instructed Cohn to
to lie about the building in Russia, to say it was January or June and change the dates, and this is perjury and we got him, we're going to indict him. And they spend the day saying, we're going to indict Trump and we're going to impeach Trump, and the reason we're going to impeach him is because he, he Mueller, the special counsel, issues a statement, which he never does, and said, this is not accurate. The news is, it's not accurate. You know what CNN does? They debate, well, he didn't say it wasn't true, he just said it's not accurate, and accurate doesn't mean it didn't happen, and actually it really could have happened, and it doesn't really mean, that's not news. News is tell me what happened, let me figure it out. Don't tell me what you think it might be. When I watch their panel of experts, they're experts in Syria and Turkey, Academy Awards, American history, they're experts in economies, they're experts in environment, American elections, these experts, and by the way, these experts, in my opinion, half of them don't know what they're talking about, can read everyone's mind, know what everyone's thinking, know why people are doing what, people they've never met, they know why they did it, why, these are the experts. So my complaint to you is gonna be very simple. All I want someone to do is have a new show and give me the news and call it news, or have a commentary, and I resent specifically the polarization being created by a make-believe news, and not fake news, but a misrepresentation, if I can ever say that, a misrepresentation of what news actually is. So I'm very disappointed about CNN for the way they conduct themselves. I'm disappointed about the behavior of Democrats, particularly my left wing. It's not the issues. You have to have some breeding. You have to know what right or wrong is. There's, there comes a point where you have to be accountable for your actions. Michelle Obama said it best. They go low, we go high. What I watched, they go low. My party's going just as well. And now I'm done. I will take, I will take questions on any of this. And I don't think they're going to like me before that's great. Um, I'll take whatever questions anybody has. Um, and Fred, hopefully we can be done now. Yeah, we're good. Thank you.